What's going on, Rockstar? Welcome back to another episode of The 1% Life. I'm your host, peak performance coach and trainer to The 1%, Joni Dillon. And you may be wondering, what does she look like a snow bunny right now? <laughs> Are you wondering that for those of you watching us live on my page on Facebook? Well, the bottom line is it's dumping snow out here in Missoula, kind of for the first time, like a real snow pounding and I'm like well I'll bundled up rated REI last night my new favorite store got some new mock boots and this uh, city girl is ready to go so that's why you see me like this um, and some of these layers may come off soon so rock stars let's get into this today we are talking about by the way let us know where you're tuning in from if you're listening to us live on Facebook drop a one if it's your first time listening to the show welcome in I know we're doing some more outreach to get new listeners to the one percent life show your help in tagging your friends your colleagues your team members just people you care about certainly helps us do that as well as leaving reviews when you get value from the show. And if you've been a repeat listener, put it too in the comments. We're talking about you hiding today, Rockstar. Are you hiding? Are you hiding? First of all, the first question I wanna ask you is, are you hiding? This episode for you is, is for you rather, if there's something you know you need to do, man, you're not doing it let's just get it out. Like you've not been doing it. You're not doing the thing. Maybe you tend to stay in the background. You don't like the limelight, right? You don't like all the attention on you. Where are you hiding in your life? If you feel that there's any place in your life that you've been hiding, then this episode today is certainly for you. And, and maybe Look, even though you've been hiding, you're not doing the one action that you know you should be doing, or maybe it's you're doing your lives, your Facebook lives, or um, getting on calls with people who you should be getting on calls with, whatever it is specifically for you, yet you still have goals, you have dreams, you have a vision for a life that you want to create, you want to manifest, and you know that by not doing these things, that's only taking you further away from what you want, right? So Roxy, we're going to get into it. I want to tell you about, first of all, a story that happened today. It's about, you know, I won't tell you who she is because her name is very unique. But we're, if you don't know this, we're running a challenge called the Get Primed Challenge, seven-day challenge online in Facebook called the Get Prime Challenge. Um, we're definitely well into this thing, by the way. It's day five today. Holy moly, it's incredible. We're on talking about the prosperous mind today. Yesterday was uh, impact and influence the mind, taught them some really kind of fun neuro-linguistic programming techniques and strategies to com increase communication or improve upon rather communication so that your message lands with whoever it is that you're communicating with and that you can pull them towards the action or the behavior that you want them to take. That was fun yesterday. And also how language impacts our own reality. What is it that you're doing or saying to yourself on a daily basis that is actually crushing the results that you want to create for yourself and that life that you so desire and deserve. And um, today we're talking about the prosperous mind. So I was on a conversation. I opened up some calls for people who are really ready to get to that next level and want some help in creating their 90 day game plan to just rock this year out, just crush 2020 in every way. And one of the individuals I spoke to, I'm going to keep her name really quiet. We're just going to call her, we won't call her Kathy today. So Kathy you know, just incredible rock star. She's like, Joni, I know I've been hiding and I'm so tired of hiding. And I said, okay, good. When you're tired of something, that's when the shift comes, right? That's when the, the opportunity to change even becomes a possibility for you because you're so tired of that thing that you're doing, that you're experiencing, that you may be living and it may be time to change, right? So we started chatting and she told me that she's in network marketing and she's got a downline of about 120 people. And she's been doing that for five years now, right? Five years. And I said, okay, so what's the specific behavior that you know you should be doing that you're not doing on a regular basis? She says, I know I should be doing her lives, you know, more. I think she's just, she's like, I get really hot right before I go live. Like even talking to you right now, like I'm really hot. And like, it's almost like this nervous energy and we traced it back to, this is really, really powerful. And I want you to think about maybe there's something for you 
when it comes to this specific topic of hiding, if that's something that you've been doing in your life. And we traced it back to a moment of her past in high school where there was this moment where a teacher called on her and she wasn't expecting it. And she went to the front of the room and literally froze, froze, didn't know what to do. She said no words came out. It was absolutely devastating. I'm sure you can imagine, especially in a time where we really care about what other people think about us and high school, (laughs) formative years. And to have that experience happen, what really happened in that specific moment in time, I don't know what led to that freezing. It could have been any number of things, right? But her unconscious mind in that moment created meaning out of that event, right? Her subconscious mind, that part of her mind that whether she does the thing or doesn't do the thing, whether she gets the goal or doesn't get the goal, whether she sabotages herself from ever reaching her desired outcomes, that's your unconscious mind. It controls 95% of what you do. Well, her unconscious mind created meaning around that specific event. She said, Joni, I know exactly when it happened. It happened when I was high, in high school and this specific thing happened. So we go back to that and um, you know, I said, where else has this shown up since? She's like, uh, everywhere. And that's the power of having unresolved significant emotional events of the past that are left unresolved. See, the unconscious mind will keep bringing that thing up (laughs) because it's unresolved. And so every day when she tries to do a show up in her business, she's like, I don't like when the leaders, you know, I've rank advanced. And when they, you know, call on me to, to take over the calls and the trainings, I get really uncomfortable. And I start thinking about all the people who should be on this or maybe wish they were the ones doing this rather than being present and actually owning that she was given the spotlight for a reason. She was handed the torch to run with it, to run with it, to lead with it. And that's a really powerful piece of awareness that when you are given the torch, when you are given that torch to run away with, right? Run away with, that has the ability to impact other people's lives, yet you're deciding and choosing. And, you know, she was She's kind of leaning into it, but not fully, right? Like the moment that this thing from her unconscious mind gets plucked out, like literally plucked out and her unconscious mind gets reframed as we call it in terms of what were the learnings from that specific event that caused that potential, potential trauma as a, as a teenager, or at least to the point that it created such an impactful Um, sequence of events going forward and really impacting her behavior in every way. Well, once that gets changed and her unconscious mind realizes that, oh, I'm actually okay. I'm safe. That was just an isolated incident. There were actually learnings and positive things I could take from this. What begins to happen is that all of a sudden she'll show up differently. She will show up. She will embrace the spotlight. She will embrace the thing that she's resisted for so long. Not consciously. See, consciously she has a desire. She knows that to get to the next level in her business, she's got to show up. But why is it that we can try to think our way there, think our way there? I know I got to do this. I know I got to do this. I can do, oh, and then we don't get there. Guys, it's deeper than that. You can't think your way to the top. You'll never be able to think your way to the top. In fact, thinking your way to anything causes nothing but a spiral downward. We got to be the person. We have to work from the inside. We have to work from the core. What's going on at the subconscious level that's causing the resistance, it's causing the friction, that's causing the, the freezing of the body that's preventing you from doing the thing. See, we, you, it's easy to say, I just don't like the limelight. I don't like to be on the camera. Oh, Joni, that's for you. You're good at it. You think I was good at it when I first started? <laughs> I sucked. You guys, I really sucked at being on camera. I literally was like, okay, I know I got to go live. I know I got to look like eyes, deer and headlights kind of thing. I don't know how to do it. You know what? I knew that it wasn't about, well, when I got it, I didn't know this right away because I made it all about me. It was all about me and I'm scared. I don't know. What are they going to say about me? They're going to judge me. They're going to think all, all these things about me. If I don't say the right things or do the right things and, and have the, everything perfect, man, when you doing the thing becomes about you, guess who it's not about? The person who really needs to receive it. The person or persons out there who are waiting for you to come on camera in your fuzzy furry sweaters and winter hats with lipstick, red lipstick smeared all over your mouth because your stupid mask smears it every time you go anywhere. Yeah, trying to clean it up, but I don't care. Literally went on a training last night. I'm like, you guys, you know, that's what happened. 
when your mission is bigger than your concern about what others think about you, guess what you do? You lean in and you do the thing anyway. You do it anyway. Why? Because it's no longer about you. Make it about service. Make it about them. Make it not about hitting your goals. So you can have all the conscious intentions in the world to hit your goals. And, you know, we talk about the three to prime, one to align methodology of priming your mind for success every single day. But guess what? At some point, it's not about you reading your goals or writing them or whatever the thing is that you do to consciously align your, 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 yourself with your goals and intentions. It's about setting that free, being a, free of the, the, the energy of that at the moment and being present with the person or the people or the platform that you are serving on and simply saying, I don't care what this feels like right now. I am doing it anyway, because I know that that gray zone, that bubble around me, that, oh, that oh, kind of feels comfortable. I don't know. It's cozy. It's comfy, but man, kind of tired of being broke, kind of tired of making the same income, kind of tired of not escalating my results or as I'm working with my coach, Jay Abram is teaching me geometrically increasing our business, geometrically increasing the results, not linearly, like linear is like going like this, right? Or like this, <laughs> linear is like that pretty linear increase. And then there's exponential increase, which is much bigger and faster. And then there's geometric where you're like, whoa, how do you go from, you know, X to, 1 million X, right? Geometric growth. And that happens outside the comfort zone. That happens outside the comfort zone. That happens outside your mind. And it happens when you work from here, your heart. And when your why is big enough, your purpose is big enough, your mission is big enough, none of that other stuff matters. None of that other stuff matters. So I want you to ask yourself, does this seem to be the theme for the day? you know, talking to people today. Uh, my team needed me to step up and take some calls today, which was great. And I did it and I really enjoyed it. Talked to two people today, which was really lovely. And it was a theme, hiding. I'm doing all the videos, Joni. I'm doing all these videos, but guess what? Not, not one, not, not even one has been posted for years, years, <laughs> years. Not one video has been posted. If you want to monetize your hobby, you got to start putting out the intention that it's no longer a hobby. It's got to become bigger than something you'd like to do, right? I don't care what the activity is. There's a specific activity, no matter what it is that you do, that is that needle mover activity that will take you from where you are to where you want to be. Now, for some of you, it's getting out of your own way, which is not the activity. And that's the thinking. That's the beingness part of it. And it's Maybe it's pitching bigger deals. Maybe it's getting so uncomfortable that you're pitching your big offer that you're so been shrinking from in the past. The big offer that's going to change somebody's life forever. That's going to transform not only their life, but their significant other's life and their children's life and their grandchildren's life someday. That when you continue to hide and not show up and do the thing or pitch the thing or present with confidence and knowing that you're the consultant, you're the advisor. I don't care what role you're in. If you're leading somebody to an outcome, you better look at yourself as a consultant. You better look at yourself as the advisor or you're just a salesperson trying to push something on somebody. Nobody wants that. Look, what happens? Your dog has an issue. You take him to the vet. Did that this week, right? You have an issue, you're not feeling good, you got a throat, sore throat, something's happening. I mean, other than doing some home remedies, if things not going away, you go to the doctor, you get it fixed. Got a heart issue, you go to a heart doctor, heart surgeon, somebody, whatever they're called, cardiologist, right? Got a brain issue, you go to neuro neurosurgeon or the neurologist first and then the neurosurgeon, right? You you take go to you go to the person, you got a car issue, you go to the mechanic. They're coming to you for a reason. They got an issue, whether they realize it or not. This is the key, guys. I, I've been talking about this a lot lately. So it must be for somebody out there that your clients or your potential buyers, if they're not clients yet, are coming to you either one at one of two places. They're either problem aware. They know they've got a problem. They know they need a solution. Your job is to show them that your product, your service, your, you are their solution or they're problem unaware, completely clueless that they have a problem. Somehow they stumbled into you. 
Now, I don't know how they just stumble into you. At some level, I believe that they're aware, <laughs> maybe subconsciously, not consciously. This used to happen a lot in the world of timeshare sales that I was in for years. People didn't know they had an issue. Like somehow somebody made you buy the smallest option ever. Of course, the thing doesn't work. You barely put any money into this and you think it's supposed to work. Of course it doesn't work. You got nothing invested. You got like an every other year, two day program. And you're wondering why the thing doesn't work. Well, you probably shouldn't have been so cheap in the first place and spent more than two grand on the thing. And you would have had something that worked right now. Maybe that's not how you talk to somebody. Please don't model that. Like I'm telling you. They have a problem, but they don't know they have a problem. So you got to make them problem aware. And others are like, our thing, our ownership doesn't work, or my vacation lifestyle sucks. He promised me he'd take me on vacation every year. She told me she'd go and she's not going, or we're spending all this money. Whatever the thing is. Problem aware, problem unaware. Guess what? Either case, in either case, your job is to make them aware that there is a solution to this problem. First of all, make them aware that there is a problem if they're unaware and that there is a solution to that problem. Now they can leave the same way they came in, the problem continuing to go along with them. Does the problem usually go away on its own? Eh, not often, it gets worse, right? You gotta see the problem differently, fix the problem, if it's a problem in your mind, well, you gotta change your mind and see other possibilities, other solutions. If it's an actual problem with their product or service, well, it'll perpetuate, it's gonna continue unless they make a decision to make a change, to upgrade, to buy something different, to enhance, to fix the dang problem. So your job is to make them aware that there is a problem and that if they are aware of that, make that thing really seem like it's not going anywhere because it's not. And, and consumers, buyers, they need to feel that, guys. Sometimes people are so unattached from the thing. Do you realize what this is really costing you? Like this individual who I'm speaking with, she's a freaking rock star and... By continuing to hold on to this problem that she's didn't know she had a like that there was a solution to. She knew there was somewhere, but out in the ethers, I don't know what it is, but I just don't know. Two years of staying at the exact same income every single month for pretty much two years, she said. Two years underperforming, under like you got a network marketing company and it's not growing for two years. You you pretty soon you start to figure out there's a problem, right? Five years into it, you're only making twenty five hundred dollars a month. There's a problem. The problem is not the other people. The problem is you. And, and she's got it. She gets it. I'm ready. I'm ready. To stop hiding. Why now? Why is now? Because the pain is great enough to change now, right? The pain, like I'm turning 50. I'm ready. I'm, how long is this going to go on for till I'm 70? You know, like the time is now. And when you get that, I mean, this is just, man, when I really got this concept, you guys, I get so excited about this. When I really get, got this concept is when I started making massive leaps in my business, massive leaps in my business, in my performance, every aspect of my life. And it was this. Sometimes as humans, we think we have forever. We're really unattached to our mortality. We think we can be immortal. Yeah, there's this concept of not being here someday that may exist, but there's this real detachment from reality. And when you think you have forever, what do you do? You act as if you have forever. But when you finally get the cost of waiting, the cost of every second, every moment, every week that turns into a month, every month that turns into a quarter, every quarter that turns into a year, every year that turns into a decade, well, you begin to finally realize maybe at 50, hopefully sooner for you, to stop adding time to stop adding time there's a cost to everything choosing to stay in your problem choosing to stay the person that you're being that's not getting the result that you desire is adding time and that time is costing you a lot of money it's costing you the impact that you want to make on the world on this planet are you if you literally were to reject this but some pass away, like at some point, would you right now, let's just say like, if you were faced with that decision you're like, not even decision, it was like, doc says, Hey, you got 48 hours. Would you be happy with where your life is? What? 48 hours. You all are free and clear from that. Would you be happy at ending your life in 48 hours? 
It's a terrible question to ask. Okay, well, ask yourself the question anyway, because you just deflecting it is putting it off for the rest of your life. Where else are you putting off answering the critical thing that's costing you your joy, your fulfillment, your health, your wellness, your money that creates impact, right? With more money create, comes more impact in the world. Stop putting up with just getting by. Stop putting up with the next, the standard that you've created. There's always another level. And if we think that we've arrived, man, you're, you're dying. You're dying. If you think you've already there, you're, you're, you're shrinking and you're dying every day. We're either expect, expanding or we're contracting at any moment in time. You're choosing to expand or contract. Is your decision in your life one of expansion or one of contraction right now? And the next decision that you make, is it one of expansion or contraction right now? That's determining your life. So Rockstar, I want to I wanna encourage you to stop hiding what do you gain from it? That you don't have to go out and look a certain way in front of other people. You don't have to fall because you presented the big offer and they said, no, who cares? Next, next. That's what we used to say in the world of time. Next. Great. They didn't want their life changed. Somebody else does next. What, what are you, what do you have to lose by just stopping this thinking of perfection or someday when I have it all together, then I'll do the thing. Stop adding time. Do the thing now. Lean in. Become the person. Build the rep. Build the muscle so that you become unconsciously competent at it. Re fire and rewire the new neurology required to be that person with intention, with purpose. And that starts with you beginning to reprogram your mind. Rockstars, it's, it is day five of this seven day challenge and all the trainings are inside. If you want to join us, heck, if you're committed, there's incredible content inside and we'll certainly welcome you in. It's free to join. Just go to getprimedchallenge.com, getprimedchallenge.com. Depending on when you're listening to this, we may or may not be on this day in particular, but we may have something else coming up. So just go there and, um, and join us, share this out. Did you get what value from today? Yes or no? Hopefully yes. And um share this out with someone that you love, that you care about, that you want to help improve their life. The more we help others, the more we really do lift ourselves. I believe that there's a ripple effect in being generous in being more selfless and being selfless period and lifting others as we climb. So rock stars, let's get out there, change some lives today and be truly unstoppable. Peace.